What in the fuck is up, yo? It's your boy Winston motherfucking Wolf. I'm back. I want to talk real quick about this Money in the Bank ladder match that just happened on Sunday. And I know what you're saying. You're saying it's Tuesday. I know what you're saying. I can hear you. But guess what? I've been sick since Saturday and I've had to go into work. So fuck off because you're not looking at what's important. And what's important is that we're spending this quality fucking time together. You and I here now appreciate it. Love it. But before I get into the actual Money in the Bank ladder match itself, um, I want to talk about Seth Rollins. And I'm just, I'm sick of this motherfucker. I've been sick of him. He just doesn't have it. His fucking promos have always been atrocious. He just tries too hard. He doesn't have that fucking it factor. He doesn't have that fucking natural whatever the fuck it takes to make you a fucking... Your character's believable in wrestling. Like, he has the stats down. He has the... He has it. He can wrestle his fucking ass off. I mean, besides fucking, you know, ending Sting's career and fucking knocking John Cena's nose halfway across his fucking face. I mean, besides shit like that, completely fucking people up. He does a lot of fucking good shit, technically. But, character-wise, I cannot buy into any fucking character. It was okay when he was with The Shield. Because he had Moxley on one side, he had fucking Roman on the other side. You knew Roman was going to be a star. You knew it. He, he wasn't much of a promo guy, but you could tell he just had that whatever it was that was going to make him a motherfucking star. Moxley, he was there from jump. He was the fucking stone cold of the group. He was the fucking mouthpiece. He was the fucking fire starter. He, so it was okay. He, he could have kind of, he got, he could, there was enough talent around him for him to get lost and find his way, but he never found his fucking way. And they pushed him fucking way too fucking much beyond what somebody... Because you can sit there and say, yeah, this motherfucker's a hell of a wrestler. It does not fucking matter. Because look at how many wrestlers have got by and become legends with zero technical ability. With only the charisma and only the mic skills and only the look. So that's almost in the wrestling world, having that fucking technical ability. That's almost what you need the very least. You need all that other shit way more than that. But anyways, this Monday Night Messiah shit, first of all, when I first saw him doing it and heard him doing it, it just came off as hokey, and it came off as something that, like, Chris Jericho would say. It's like he took one of Chris Jericho's fucking catchphrases from the fucking late 90s and was like, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a character out of it. So when you say Monday Night Messiah, I immediately think of Chris Jericho. Then, this whole fucking being a cult leader shit, we just saw that shit from fucking Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt did it fucking the best you could fucking do it bray wyatt has done the wrestling cult leader gimmick drop the mic after that you cannot fucking do that gimmick anymore you at least gotta wait 20 years and then maybe find somebody with the fucking charisma in the town that might come along and might be able to fuck with it okay because after bray did it he burnt the shit down no one else can fuck with it but now you're gonna try it like sorry dude you ain't no fucking bray wyatt bray wyatt's once in a lifetime fucking talent so, yo, so him combining the fucking one of Chris Jericho's catchphrases and the fucking and uh, the Bray Wyatt cult leader fucking gimmick together, it's just it is a bad fucking idea. And I don't know if he's just that unfuckwittable backstage, uh, you know, with fucking management and everything to where he could just come up with some stupid idea and everyone's going to brown nose the kids eyes. But yeah, great, great idea, Seth. I don't know, but somebody needs to fucking tell this dude, like, just stop. In this fuck, No, stop it. Pick something else, because this ain't it. And get him a fucking manager. Seriously. Like, fucking Paul Heyman, if fucking Brock leaves anytime soon, I think he would be an excellent fucking manager for Seth Rollins. He'd be just what he would need. I mean, you could say, but that's kind of stock. You could say you put fucking Paul Heyman with anybody. You can give Paul Heyman any kind of job within the wrestling fucking... You could have the motherfucker go sell hot dogs during the matches and he would be the best fucking hot, slanging hot dogs like a motherfucker. Pause. But he'd be the best hot dog salesman during the wrestling event you ever fucking seen. God damn it. But, but let's get to the actual match. Uh, let me just get off the fuck Seth Rollins shit because it's just like, dude, you fucking end this thing's career. You fucking smash John Cena's face. Like, like you're lucky to have a career after those two fucking things. And you, it, he's... Seth Rollins is lame. So, but anyways, let's get to the Money in the Bank ladder match. Okay, I understand they got to do certain things because of just this... With the fucking pandemic and all this fucking shit with the empty arenas and they have... Okay, that's fucking fine. But at this point, it feels like 
Vince McMahon is embracing the fact that they have to do these turn matches into like these like skits. Because to him, I think on one hand, it proves that they don't need that much of a staff and they can still make money. I don't know how much money they're making, but I, I think in his brain, the fucking wheels are fucking, the cogs are turning and he's like, okay, well, shit, man, we're, we, we can learn something from this. We can learn that we need less people, that, the, that we can make, instead of having actual fucking wrestling matches, we could just have empty, empty building, empty arena skits and do this and make it more like TV, make it more, because... If you don't know, if you're new to wrestling or whatever, or if you haven't been able to tell, Vince McMahon is almost ashamed of the fact that his company is a wrestling company. He wants to be an entertainment company. He wants to make fucking Magnum P.I. He wants to make Hawaii Five O. He wants to make uh, fucking uh, Miami Vice. He, wants to, he doesn't want to make a fucking wrestling show. He wants to make anything but. He wants to make a live action show. He doesn't want it to be any kind of sporting contest. So, with these limitations that's going on and the, w- the way they edit it and the way they add all this fucking bullshit in there, I think he's actually liking this shit. I mean, I mean, of course, they're, you know, it's, it's a very rough draft of probably what he wants to do, but I have a, a fucking sinking feeling that fucking this shit isn't going to go away even when they're allowed to have fans. I have a feeling that he's going to use a lot of this shit that's been going on. A lot of these fucking hokey skits. A lot of a lot of pre-taped shit. Just a lot of fucking goofy-ass bullshit. And wrestling's going to go through. If you think wrestling's in a dark time now, it's about to get fucking darker. Because you don't fucking gave this motherfucker pretty much what he wants. Um... And what he wants is a plan to put as much cornball fucking bullshit into the matches and whatever as he can because he has a sense of humor of a fucking fucking third grader apparently. Like 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 fucking he still giggles over shit jokes and shit. Vince McMahon, I'm talking about. So we're in for a fucking hell of a good time. And if you're a wrestling fan, you know that you can't completely walk away. You're like a battered fucking wife. You're always gonna come back, you're always gonna fucking check it out. When it's on TV, you're always going to fucking watch WrestleMania. No matter how shitty it is, you're at least going to watch WrestleMania every year. So, fucking get ready. Get ready to get your ass fucking beat with a fucking belt for not having the fucking chicken pot pie done when Vince McMahon gets home from work. Because we're going to be the fucking battered wives in this fucking situation. And Vince McMahon is going to be the drunk ass husband with the wife beater with the spaghetti stains on it whooping our motherfucking ass just for fucking love and wrestling but the match with fucking otis winning the shit asuka no problem with her winning the women's money in the bank that's fucking asuka deserves it she deserves everything she's the shit she's been a number one since she got there fucking no problem with that i don't think anybody who fucking is even knowledgeable or cares about wrestling has any issue with that the other but in the men's side otis now I've been just limited to watching just the pay-per-views and WrestleManias because that's how bad wrestling has gotten. Um, I thought my love wrestling was going to be reignited once AEW got in the fold, but just from some of this shit, some of the early mistakes, it re- it really took me out of it. And a lot of people that they push, I just can't believe it. You already got to suspend your fucking disbelief when you're watching wrestling. It's hard, man. It almost gets to the point where you have to squint your eyes and fucking fucking rub vaseline pause rub vaseline over your eyes squint him when you're watching just to try to you know make it look as real and believable as as possible and and not see the mistakes and not see the hokiness and shit but fuck dude having this dude otis i don't know much about him but this is definitely not a way to get people that have strayed away to come back now on one hand you could kind of see where it's like, okay, this is, you know, people are fucking struggling in the world. You want to give them someone they can relate to, you know, the common man type of shit. 22 hours um, that might have worked with fucking Mick Foley. China and the Soviet Union. But Otis ain't no fucking Mick Foley. And you also watch wrestling almost as an escape. It's almost like watching fucking Marvel films or some shit like that. 
charge. You you kind of want to see people that can do superhuman shit. It's like watching porn. You don't want to see the regular basic bra that you can fuck. You want to see some fucking stacked ass bitch that fuck it you'd probably never be able to fuck. Some just fucking chick that's built like the fucking like uh, a a fucking slave girl from the cover of a fucking Conan comic book. Like just stacked as fuck. Like you don't want to see some regular basic bitch that works down at the at the fucking Kroger. You don't that's Come on now. So I mean I understand maybe what the mindset was of having Otis win, but no, that's just too slovenly. Nobody's going to look up to a fucking morbidly obese fucking dude that just fucking has food all over his beard. Nobody, there's nothing cool about that. No one's going to want to wear the fucking t-shirt. I want to see the numbers of how many t-shirts they've sold. Because it's, I've, I'm shocked they probably sold even one or two t-shirts. It's just one of the most unappealing visually fucking uh, aesthetically just fucking technically every lee fucking you can think of it's no it's no good having otis fucking win that shit and if you look at money in the bank that's become like the new king of the ring where it's like if you win money in the bank you have a good two months not to fuck it up that's like all right we're gonna give you the title but not give you the title we're gonna give you a fucking two months two month grace period before you actually get the title to not completely fuck it up, to not piss off a bunch of people backstage, to not injure people, to not get arrested, to not beat your wife, to not whatever. So if you can last this two months, then you get the actual match and then you get the title. It's kind of like that with King of the Ring. King of the Ring was someone who win that tournament. You knew that was setting them up to win the world title and to have a big future. I think the first person to fuck it up and kind of put a stain on it was, was Billy Gunn. But it's just, he was just always known as, as a fucking tag team player. And I think at that time he had a fucking drug problem. So, you know, it's, and then I also think um, if you read some uh, backstage shit, Triple H didn't, was kind of holding him down and shit. So what, who the fuck knows? But this is the new King of the Ring. Fucking if you win the money in the bank, we're, we're going to go with you, but, but we're going to fucking, we're not going to immediately put the title on you. We're going to give you a couple months. We're going to give you enough rope to hang yourself. If you don't, you're going to get the fucking title. So hopefully this is some big ruse, but I don't, dude, I don't know. It's even him winning it. That was just like, you're watching the pay-per-view. You got AJ Styles. Okay. That's, uh, I forgot who else, but, but. I think everybody kind of, in their in their wrestling hearts, they wanted fucking Rey Mysterio to win that because then you knew that fucking this was like, all right, fuck yeah, man, one one of our favorites from the fucking nineties, you know, through the Attitude Era, through the Monday Night Wars, through the fucking uh, Ruthless Aggression Era, damn, he's you know what I'm saying people can't they gave the motherfucking shit to Goldberg, why not give it to fucking Ray Ray? No, they didn't fucking do it. And then you're like, oh, well, you know, if Ray doesn't get it, well, at least AJ gets it. And you know if AJ fucking gets it and he wins the title, that's just quality. AJ Styles is fucking quality, okay? Fucking, he is the shit. He's the fucking man. He's the fucking Kobe Bryant of fucking wrestling. No, he didn't get it. They give it to motherfucking um, Otis. See, I even forgot his fucking name right there. But somebody else that was in the fucking Money in the Bank ladder match that I like, that along with Bray Wyatt's new character, along with AJ Styles, along with Shinsuke, even though they're fucking, fucking his career up, is Aleister Black, I really fucking like Aleister Black, when I first saw him, I didn't like it, but he quickly grew on me with his wrestling style, with his gimmick, I fucking love it, he, like, the gimmick is kind of gothic, vampire-ish, but he doesn't go overboard, they just give you just enough, they give you just enough, to where it 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 doesn't uh, define him. To where he can his character, you know, what I'm saying it can it can uh, evolve. It can change into other things, and I'd be always tied into this fucking gothic shit. You know, similar to Edge. If you remember when Edge first came out, it's kind of like this fucking alternative hot topic type dude. But then it just kind of morphed into its own thing, you know. Um, but Alistair Black went it? No, no, he didn't win it. They gave it to fucking Otis. They gave it to Otis, a big fat fucking hillbilly they get it yo and i just want to say if vince mcmahon thinks that this is what the so-called regular man and i did air quotes because that's how fucking ridiculous this shit is 
If he thinks that's what the common man wants, he really does need to fucking step the fuck down. He really needs to let Triple H fucking do what the fuck he wants to do. Because it seems like as hated as Triple H has fucking been over the years, what he's done with NXT in, you know, undercar, t- however you want to fucking call it, you know, talent that, that isn't like automatically pray he can he can see the diamond in the rough he keeps his eyes on the indies he knows what the fuck's going on he knows what the fans want for the most part but something needs to be done because that shit was just fucking ridiculous that shit was just a big dude i had to work the next day i'm sitting there watching the shit i'm sick as fucking bed and i'm like oh oh this one and and even michael cole i don't know if he fucking did the the ve- if you listen to Michael Cole's commentating from the moment that Otis wins this shit, how he sounds like somebody shot his fucking dog in the head with a 12-gauge in front of him. Even Michael Cole, the show that he is, couldn't fucking fake it for that. So you know if Michael Cole can't fake the shit, the shit is straight up motherfucking trash. So I don't know. Hopefully Otis loses it. Hopefully somebody on the internet... Um, on the interwebs on one of the videos, they said that somebody's gonna kind of leverage something with Mandy, uh, against, you know, fucking some, something to where because of Mandy, he loses the fucking title or he loses the money in the bank. Ladder match briefcase. I fucking hope so. I fucking hope so. Cause that shit, it's getting fucking, dude, it's already hard to watch with the fucking empty arena matches. It's already hard to watch with all the hokey shit. It's it's almost like they're just purposely like, yo, let's just fuck this up. Let's fucking take a big, huge, steaming, fucking runny ass shit all over fucking the fucking whatever remaining love that, in, that, that the fans have. Let's just shit on it. Then let's fucking pour lighter fluid on the shit and then set the shit on fire and then shit on the fire. Like, I don't know, Vince McMahon fucking yo stephanie and hunter need to put him in a motherfucking home and i'm not talking about one of them homes that you know for richard i'm talking about one of them shitty ass old folks homes where they be beating the fuck out of them at night and they be fucking stealing their wedding rings and shit that's what i'm talking about but anyways this is your boy with some motherfucking wolf i've rambled long enough i just had to make a video about that fucking travesty about that fucking abortion that they called money in the bank Jesus fuck. At least Oscar won her match though, so. It's your boy winning some motherfucking wolf. I'll see y'all later.